This video covers changing the order of integration for double integrals. And this is particularly short because I've already been um, changing the order of integration on our, our, my other videos. But um, it's good to just uh, go through this formally. And also there's additional examples for you. This slide contains all the ideas we will cover. There's one example and then one problem for you to try for review. So first, if we have a double integral that goes from x equals a to b, and then y goes from a function of x to a function, another function of x, then we can change the order of integration such that y is the outside integral and x is the inside integral. But now we have to change also our limits of integration, so our constants on the outside uh, match y, and then our functions here are functions of um, functions as x as functions of y. So we'll do an example. So here I have an integral, and it has um, x on the outside. So x goes from 0 to a, and then y goes from 0 to this quarter circle here. So again, we're going along um, the x-axis from 0 to a, and then y is going from the x-axis up to this um, quarter circle. So this is our inter integral here, and this is our f of x, y, z. So the limits of integration, and this integral is set up correctly for, th for this uh, area. However, if you look at this, um, once you try to integrate a squared minus y squared with respect to y, we, we can't do this because we don't have the the, the derivative of this, the 2y on the outside. So this is a, we just can't integrate it, which is a reason why we would look at changing the order of integration. In particular, I can integrate with respect to x first and then with respect to y. So I can switch the order of integration. So when I look at my limits on y, you can see that y is still going from 0 and then it goes all the way up to the value of a because this is a quarter circle. So these are this is my limit for y, 0 to a. And then if I look at x, x goes from the x equals 0 until it hits the circle. So it's x equals 0 up to the circle. So that's my limit, 0. And then the circle is square root, and x in terms of y is square root of a squared minus y. So this looks very similar because, you know, since it's a quarter circle, the limits are very symmetric. But um, the difference is now, when I take the derivative with respect to x, I can do that because I'm not worried about this y squared here. And I'm not worried about having uh, the derivative of 2y out here because now I can just put an x in front. This is essentially a constant. And here you see I go ahead and take with respect to x, so this becomes a constant. I plug in my values and I'm able to complete my integral. The last concept we have for this video is the mean value theorem for the double integrals. So suppose we have f, it goes maps from some domain to the real numbers, it's continuous, and d is an elementary region. Then for some point x0, y0, and d, we know that the integral of the volume is going to equal to the mean height times the area of the base. So we have this mean value because here we have our f, our average f of x, y. This is a topic often skipped by teachers. That's it for the main ideas. So I have one more example and then one problem for you to try. Here is our example problem. We have this domain d, which goes from x equals 1 to e, and y goes from 0 up to natural log of x. So the way I explained it, it seems very natural then to, if we wanted to know the area of d, we would integrate the function 1, and we would integrate x from 1 to e, and y from 0 to natural log of x. And this is a very natural thing to do because um, y is written in terms of x. So it seems like an obvious way to set up our integral. So here I integrate y, and I get a y evaluated at 0 natural log of x, and then I get natural log of x dx. Now to integrate this, 
I would have to use integration by parts. For integration by parts, I let u equal natural log of x, so du is 1 over x dx. I let dv is equal to dx, and then I'm going to integrate u dv. Um, it's going to be uv minus the integral of v du. And then you can see I plug in, and I get my final answer. But I can actually avoid integration by parts by switching the order of integration. So I have the y equals natural log of x. So if I uh, raised both sides to the exponent, I would get e to the y is equal to x. And now I'm ready to set up my limits of integration. So switching, y now goes from 0 to 1. And then x is going to go from this curve to e. So it's going to go to from e to the y over to the line e. And um, this is quite easy to integrate. So here is a problem for you to try. Pause the video, give it a try, and on the next slide I will give you a solution. Here is the solution. And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching.